I mostly work in bronze, but then I also use other materials like stainless steel, brass, uh, sometimes ceramic, and corten steel. One of the reasons why I like to create in bronze is that I've seen really old sculptures that were in bronze. So creating in bronze gives you the idea. For, for me, it just lets me know that this is going to be around forever. So I need to use this material. This piece of art should, must be significant because it's going to last. And when you're in the public, uh, public realm of designing sculpture, you really need to be cognizant not only of how long it's going to last, but is it safe and, and can people interact with it? Will it stay relevant? So um, yeah, it's very important to, see, to do that. The exhibition title is Work and Soul, Two Decades of Practice. And the work portion uh, of the title, that it was really important to me to show that it's taken a lot of work and time to put in uh, this series of, of pieces. I, I started working when I would, uh, was staying home at, uh, with my son as he was growing and I had a, a baby monitor in the studio and the studio was in my garage and I, when I would hear him wake up I'd have to run upstairs and then you know get him what he needed and then I'd put him back to sleep or whatever he needed to do and then rush back down to the studio and work so it was always constantly working and also working at night. So I felt like I never really uh, had time to, to just take, take time off and not put the work in. And, and the soul about it is, uh, of the title really for me is like, I, I always had to do this. The fine art was always something that I had to do and, and I wasn't really satisfied with other, other industries that I was in and other creative ventures. They just didn't satisfy that need. So. Uh, so that was important. And then also the two decades of practice, it's always been kind of practice because when you're doing something for the first time, it's almost like a prototype, but it's going to be the piece of art. So sometimes there's, uh, there's problems, sometimes there's setbacks, but with each piece, I'm, I'm learning something new with each piece. And that's why I kind of want people to understand that it's never like you're making art and it's perfect each time. There's things that I've learned all along the way. I wanted to show the relationship between an artist uh, and the artist community and the city and show the growth and, and progression of a career. And I thought that could be really not only educational but interesting to, to the community and other people at large just to see that, to see the transition from materials to scale to size to ideas and narrative of, of the work. This piece is titled Fortuito, which means fortuitous in Spanish. And uh, it was the very first sculpture that I created of fine art. When I moved to Laguna Beach, this stone was in the garage and I thought I would use it as a piece of art and I actually had this displayed at the Sawdust Festival the first year I was there. Actually it was for the Winter Fantasy Show and normally you have little trinkets and smaller items that people can give as gifts but I thought I'd take the opportunity to show a large piece of fine art and I thought just being able to talk about a piece of art was, was, would be great and uh, it's made up of uh, regular mild steel, a uh, copper bar, and the stone. Funny story behind this, I had, I had priced it at, I think it was about $600 or so, and uh, a, a good friend now and client uh, came by and said, wow, that's, that's a nice piece, but I think you have it priced way too low. And after he left, I, I thought, you know, I'm going to listen. This is the first time I've ever done this. So I raised the price to like $1,200 or something like that. And he came back around and he said, oh, hey, I was gonna buy that, you know? And uh, we worked out a deal where you know, I lowered it back, you know? And uh, so I think he, he bought it for like $900 or something like that. But uh, since then, that really gave me the confidence to, to keep going and to create more pieces. And, and with each piece, large or small, it, it's helped just propel me forward to creating more pieces and different types of pieces. So, what was rewarding for me is that 
I've always enjoyed being around a lot of people. I love meeting new people. And the art almost became like a vehicle for, for me to, to have conversations with people, to meet new people. And, and, and being able to sell it was just like kind of the cherry on top. So it's, it's been really great. This piece is titled Breath of Life and it's the very first bronze that I created. In order to learn the bronze making process, I hired an artist to teach me how to make molds. And I sat with him for, it was like one day, for maybe five or six hours, and we made a, a mold of, of uh, a sculpture that I had before, but this is one that I did on my own. And usually when you create a bronze sculpture, you, after you make the mold, you open it and you fill it with wax, a thin layer of wax, you put it back together and you add a little bit more wax to make the pieces come together, but it's a, a thinner piece. And you send that wax to the foundry where they'll cast ceramic around it and then they do the uh, lost wax process. Well, I didn't get the, uh, the thinner wax uh, pour for the, the sculpture. So I, this sculpture actually filled the entire mold up with wax. So th this particular sculpture is solid bronze. So uh, extremely heavy and um, there's a steel base on the, on the bottom of it. The whole process of sculpting it and listening to music, I had headphones on. I remember doing it at night. And when I would finish each session of sculpting, I'd come upstairs and I would still be just so excited, like, like I had just you know, drank five cups of coffee and it was just from working because it was just so much fun and engaging and uh, just really therapeutic. This is actually a replica of an ostrich bone, but uh, I blew it up to this size. It, it was in a book that uh, a photographer had of an uh, African safari and the, the bone that was there was used by the medicine men in this particular village and they would put, there's a hole in here, like a crevice, and they would put dust in the hole and blow it into the person's face and they'd, they'd be healed of their, their ailments or things like that. And I entitled it Breath of Life, uh, the B-R-A-D-T-H, like the breath of life is, is what's important for us and it's like, it's, it represents the dash in between our birth and our death. And it's like that, what's in between that, those dates is what's important. So it's like, we have to have a wide breath and, and important, and we need to really connect with people and make the world a better place for each individual doing it. This piece is entitled, Thanks But No Thanks. And I kind of came up with a couple of different concepts on this. The whole thought of maybe uh, government overreach, coddling people, doing too much for particular people that uh, puts them in a position where they can't really provide for themselves. Uh, the, I used the rhinoceros to depict that because the rhinoceros out in the wild, it has these horns and these thick skin and, and armor, and it does a great job at doing what it needs to on its own. And by placing it on this really uh, high pedestal, it's, it's not natural, it's not supposed to be in that position. And so I feel like it's important for, for individuals to, to be able to go out and fail and, and regain their footing and, and and uh, succeed in a way which builds confidence where they're able to just do things on their own. It's really important. A lot of the, th the themes come from different conversations that I've had. Sometimes it comes from the news that I see and sometimes it's from books that I've read that I wanna dive deeper in and ex explore a theme by creating a piece about it. And uh, a lot of it's positivity, it's a lot of it's growth and um, uh, personal development as well, you know, and, and I, I take these ideas and then I incorporate them into different objects that s talk about that narrative or even also give the opportunity to, for someone to think about 
kind of those concepts that I'm talking about. So they're kind of like a icebreakers for, for some, some things as well. So this is one of the larger bronze pieces in the show and it's entitled Indomitable. And it's made up of bronze sheet and incorporated with cast bronze, which is the wing. And with this piece, I, I almost came up with the concept first. I wanted to show indomitable means like not quitting, not stopping, just going forward no matter what. And I kind of imagined that this, with just one wing, to me it was representing even if everything else of a bird is gone, that wing is still gonna push forward and, and still succeed. And a, what's also been really great about being in these shows is I have feedback from the different uh, people that are viewing it. And I was speaking with this one guy and he said, you know, it, it almost looks like the patinas that you've used on the bronze, it almost looks like a storm that this wing is flying through. And, it, and I thought, that's right, it definitely, how you see that is correct and how anyone feels about a sculpture is, is positive and good and it becomes actually part of the sculpture too because it creates a narrative not only for what I'm doing but also the narrative that a person has about it and that becomes part of the sculpture as well. Yeah, I was raised Catholic and there's always Latin in uh, grammar school and in church and my high school and I also studied it in college and I did uh, study Virgil which was very tough and I thought you know what I'm going to use some of this Latin because I worked so hard uh, before and it, it's I find that it's interesting it's it's also used in scientific terms and things with animals and, and natural history and things so um, it I like how the how it sounds but then also the explanations could be a little bit more broad and then putting the words together as well. In 2008, I was invited to be a part of the a fundraiser called Pallet to Pallet for the museum. And the, the theme of the, the fundraiser was there's 10 artists that design 10 tables for 10 dinner guests. And I came up with a theme of politics and religion because that's always a good dinner theme. <laughs> so I created pieces and I, I put them around the table and I had some wall pieces and then I had uh, the table itself was, uh, uh, it's like a sky shot of a city view with birds on a wire and some buildings. All of these pieces are on limestone bases and I thought it was really important to have them tall next to the dinner table as you're eating. They were just kind of right over your shoulders and kind of in part of the conversation going on at the dinner party. And this one is titled Fidelis Miles, which is Latin and that's faithful soldier. We all have our different crosses that we bear, different things that we believe, different trials and tribulations. Uh, the raven here can easily let that cross off of its neck, but it's going to carry it on because it's, it's very important to, to the raven. And this is quote quam, which means which in what way. And this one really talks about religion and faith, like which religion you have or which beliefs you have or if you don't have beliefs. And with the stairs going every direction, almost Escherisk, they don't lead anywhere. But in the end, there's, there's a blank stare and it doesn't lead to the center. There's a dove in the center. And it's like, they don't connect. In order to get to where you wanna go, it's a leap of faith to get to, to what you think is your nirvana. So this next piece is called Absolutum Dominium, and which means absolute power. And this vulture, has these rings that are that he has one in its beak and it's collecting them there's one on the leg it wrapped around the leg and then there's one on the neck and it's it's a reference of absolute power can corrupt and absolute power is uh, it can uh, constrict you like the one around its neck it's like it 
is unbeknownst to that person that the power is actually you know, damaging and can, can uh, lead to something dangerous. This piece is titled Fact or Fiction. And I, I use that title because I, I really started questioning some of the things that we hear in, in the media, that we hear from different people, is it, you know, from CNN, Fox, whatever. It's like, is it, is it truth? Is it fact? Is it fiction? Is it propaganda? And it's important to question everything and not just accept things that either are on the news just because it's the news channel. And just because people say things that we have conversations or friends and it's like, you really have to question it and do your own research on different, different titles and different things. Um, the, the design from this table came from uh, the design of a table that I saw in a picture that where the Declaration of Independence was signed. And this is a beechwood table, and I thought, you know, it's, I wanted to go full circle from the declaration to fact or fiction to today. And, and to bring it even more modern, I, I did it again a few years later in stainless steel with wenge wood. And just to, just to really nail home that there's, the narrative changes throughout time and we need to disseminate what, what is real and what is not. So, um, these are kind of coupled with another piece that really talks about education and, and books and reading and things. Uh, this is called, You Get Out What You Put In. And I have a little baby there. And when babies are born, they're these, golden little bright things that will soak up anything that you teach them. And the importance of what we teach them, they'll adopt and they'll take it with them in the rest of their lives. So it's really, really important that we teach them the right things and the correct things and the most hopeful things and positive things. Um, some of the books are important that are placed closer to the, the infant and then some are less and then some are just completely random books there. The mirror, represents things that we have been taught, things that we teach. And I'm also like, by using the mirror, it places the person in the piece as well. So it actually almost invites the viewer to question what they've heard, accept, re-accept, or, or discard the things that just aren't true and things that aren't helpful and positive or useful in their lives. I was inspired by this particular piece after seeing a sign that said, teach them diligently. I started thinking about education, our education system in the United States, and how I think it's really lagging the rest of the world and it's really faulty. Um, I feel like there's some things that need to be uh, taught more. Um, and, and it's like the reason that they're they're taught like what what are the true things that we want to get out of our, our education so this particular piece is called doqui perceptum which means teach and learn with the whole idea of like teaching them diligently it's like it's really important that we we teach our kids and each other quickly the right things before negativity sets in and we always need to continuously learn in life, especially as adults too. I think when we stop learning, we stop growing. So um, it's really important to keep learning. With a lot of pieces that are in this collection, the idea of the sculpture would come first and then I would create the, the sculpture from those ideas and gather the different pieces and sculpt those things. Well, with this one, it was a little different in that a friend of mine had a pet tortoise that, that had died. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm sorry about that. It's really horrible. But uh, if I could have the, the shell, I could make a mold out of it and create a piece of art. And in that way, 
kind of honor the, the tortoise and that it'll live on. The memory of it and its shell and the beauty of the shell will live on. So I started thinking of a theme that would work with that. And um, this particular piece is, it's entitled Unstained. And it represents uh, the innocence and the invincibility that we have when we're really young, like four to six years old. As kids, we'll jump on a table and put a cape on and feel like we're Superman and we're happy no matter, you know, sometimes the circumstances, wherever we are. And it's that beauty and that uh, absolute potential in children, which is really important. And that's where the light shining through is just like they're LED lights and it's just like the unstained nature of, of that um, is really important. And sometimes as we grow, society and our communities kind of almost beat that out of us and, and it's, it's not good and it's, not, and it's important to keep those, those ideals uh, in the forefront and the, the true potential, the true talents that are innate in every person to shine forth. When creating artwork, I use everything in life as fuel or inspiration to create art. Be it stories from the past, be it conversations of the present. This particular piece I entitled The World Waits kind of was inspired by the this Godzilla series. There was a the big turtle named Gamera that would fight Godzilla and protect Godzilla from, from the people. I used that title because I'm representing the turtle as like the, the talents that people have. Like the world is waiting for everyone to really share their talents, their true innate talents with the world. And uh, I've got LED lights shining out, like the turtle would spin and fire would come out of its legs and its, its arms and, and not Godzilla. And so I, I also have it, the post, it's like a rocket ship. It's like, that's, I'm, that's kind of depicting that. It's important that it's now, it needs to be fast. I think everyone needs to just really do that as soon as they can. Uh, the gears I have in my work represent industry and work and engineering and things. So, um, yeah, created the world waits. Is, uh, the world is waiting for us to all share what we have inside our innate talents. I wanted to use my the fashion design history and the costume design into fine art right now and just kind of mash the two worlds together. And then also placing myself in, in the center of that, doing things that, that I like to do and representing those in sculpture. So the very first thing I did was a Gucci meditation pod. So I'm using that big fashion icon and a meditation pod that you know, I like to meditate and mashing it together, creating this sculpture and kind of talking about the beauty of the two. This is the first of the series, and I have designs to do more in the series where I'm taking different iconic fashion brands and melding them with uh, objects, industrial objects, be it sports objects and things like that, and then putting them together and creating it. It's a piece of art that would just stand alone and, and you would just look at it, so.